Hello folks and thank you for joining me once again for another playthrough. Today we are going to be playing through Tinhelm, a perilous solo micro quest from Jason Glover who designed Iron Helm and Desolate and various other games, some of which I've played on this channel. I'll pop a couple of links to playthroughs of Jason's other games in the description below. I am the Lone Adventurer. If you are a subscriber to my channel, you will know by now that this is the sort of game that I enjoy playing. It's a dungeon delve sort of game where you are running through a series of levels with a character trying to achieve a goal of some kind, keeping track of various bits and pieces, fighting various beasties, collecting bits and pieces of loot, and generally having a sort of a, a role-playing light sort of experience with various mechanics that allow you to play it on your own. So if we have a look on the back of the tin, this, by the way, was a game that was made on the GameCrafter.com, uh, the, the GameCrafter website. If we have a look on the back, the Brotherhood of the Red Cloth long made their home deep in the abandoned mines of the Black Mountains. But a sickness came upon them as they delved too deep and their minds have been twisted, and their attention has shifted to creating wicked evils. Darkness now lives here, and only a true hero can cure the madness that has consumed all. And it's a 30-minute game. Tin Series Volume 3. I suppose Volume 1 is Gate. Volume 4 is Gates. Which is an expansion. I'm not sure what volume two is actually. So let's see what we need to do here. We need to create a character, which is a fairly simple process. We've got these character cards here. I think a couple of them came in the Gates expansion as a sort of a little treat for fans of this game. So I'm not sure which ones are from the original box, the Tin Helm Tin, and which are uh, additions. Um, I'm just going to look away and randomly select a character. What have we got? We've got the human. Okay, there we go. And then on the backs of all these cards we've got uh, classes, which give you a bit more information and a bit more variety. So you combine a character and a class to get the uh, the character that you're going to play. I guess a race and a and a class. So let me have a look. What are we going to go for here? I think I'm going to go for the Skull Keeper. Your fever continues to rise as blood pumps furiously through your veins. Must collect more skulls. Gory. All right. So here we've got um, health. So that's added on to the health score of the other card to give us our total health. We'll see that in a second. Here we've got energy, that's added on to the energy score on the other card to give us our total energy. These are the damage that you do in combat, depending upon how much energy you commit to a particular attack. And then down at the bottom we've got some starting items. So let's grab those starting items to start with. We need a potion and a cutlass. There's the potion. These are double-sided as well. There's the cutlass. Put those to one side. So the Cutlass, when in combat against an enemy that is not undead, I inflict one additional damage on successful hits, and the potion can be discarded to gain two health and two energy. What other setup do we need to do? Well, let's check the human's special ability. So it says here, humans may select one extra trappings card of their choice from the remaining cards before beginning their adventure. So we need to get these cards back in actually. And we've got six items that we can choose from. I think I'm just gonna go for some books. 
gain one extra energy when you rest at a campsite. So that can be handy, energy is important. So our starting health is nine plus five, so 14. And we track health, oh, so that's the maximum, that's pretty good. That's a lot of health. Okay, so our max health is 14. Energy, we've got nine plus, sorry, not nine, seven plus three, which is 10. Oops. And that is not only our current energy, but also our maximum energy. So we need to remember that we can't increase that above 10. We're starting with zero rations. Rations can be used for various things. And the other tracker we've got here, so we've got energy, rations, and health. We've also got favor. And favor you get points for at the end of the game. So you tally everything up, you get points for various bits and pieces. And then you're given a final score that you can compare future playthroughs again to see how well you've done and favors one thing that you get points for. This other card here has got two trackers on it. Up at the top, we've got a tracker from one to five. That tracks the level of the dungeon that we're on. So we've got the marker here on level one to start with. And this marker here is to track the en the health of an enemy. So if we encounter an enemy that starts with seven health, we would put it there and then use that to track it down to zero. And then we keep the little, the little cube up there when it's not in use. So we're starting with no favor, no rations, 10 energy, 14 health. I think that is everything. So how this game plays is similar to Iron Helm and Desolate in that you've got a small deck that represents the area that you are moving through. So this represents your our current level in the dungeon. So we'll run through all these cards once once we've done that, we will have completed level one. We have to do a couple of bits of housekeeping at the end, and then we progress to level two. All the while, we're looking for these all important shards. These are the shards. And if we collect all three, we instantly win the game. And there's various ways you can collect those, and those will become apparent as we are playing. We'll give us a bit of a random shuffle. I'll just quickly show you how it works, creating uh, a location for our character to move into. We look at the top card we have here and we look at the icons down below and these icons tell us what is in this room. So we can see here, this has got a monster. So if we were like, okay, we want to fight that monster, let's give it a go. We would place the card down and then the next card we would flip over and place next to it. And that gives us all the information about this room. So it's a chasm, we look at the icon, we look over here, and that tells us the monster that we are facing, the possessor, which annoyingly is the monster that has the shards. So one of the ways you can get a shard is by fighting a possessor. So that would have been a nice way to start. I kind of wish I wasn't using this as a demo. Never mind. The other option that you have is to look at the card and say, I don't like the look of what's coming up. And this isn't a very good example because that's treasure. And I would imagine in the majority of situations you'd be like, hell yeah, I'm having the treasure. But if for some reason you were like, no, I don't really fancy it. What you would do is you would flip this card over to the other side pop it there and then the next card is the room that you have gone into so it's basically reversed and you have less control over the situation so we've ended up going into a room with a monster and a treasure which is uh, fine um, maybe you want to find monsters so th th those are the two ways that this goes Okay, let's get started. So I need to remember that I get extra energy at a campsite, and I need to remember that when I'm fighting non-undead creatures, I do extra damage. Do not forget. 
Okay, so our first room could be the catacombs, which will have a monster and will have some kind of surprise. The question mark is a uh, unexpected thing. What does it say in the rules? The rules are also on cards. A random encounter. That's that's the phrase, isn't it? A random encounter. Okay, so well, let's just go for that, shall we? So let's go into the catacombs. And we are fighting a spider. Spider? Yeah, because it's got a big eye. And then the random encounter is the grove, which is fairly good news. So let's find the spider. There we go. Let's have a little look at what you get on a creature card. So this is this is its health. What you do is you take that number, you add on your current dungeon level, and then that is the amount of health it has. So this particular spider will have four health. It does an additional point when attacking. Doesn't do any defending, so that's good. And it gives us one favor as a reward. And there's a little additional um, ability of the monster here. You lose one energy every time the spider successfully hits during combat. Now, that might not happen because we are, and we always, unless a card says otherwise, hits first in combat. Since this spider has only got four points of energy, I'm moderately hopeful that we will be able to defeat it before it gets a chance to hit us. And this is how combat works. You have to spend one, two or three energy. I'm going to spend just one energy. That means that I will be doing an additional three damage when we hit. Plus, don't forget, I'm doing a point because of my cutlass. So we're going to roll some dice. We are going to find out the difference between the two dice that we roll. We will add on three, since I used one energy. And we will also add on one for our cutlass. Just trying to decide how to roll, roll right-handed so that it stays in shot. Did that stay in shot? Yes, it did. Okay. All right, so that's good. We've got a two and we've got a six. So that's a difference of four. We're adding on three because of our one energy expelled. Four, five, six, seven. And we're adding on one for the cutlass. So we've done a total of eight damage. So we have easily killed the spider. Nice, simple first encounter. We gain one favour. Spider is expelled, and we move on to the second item. Note, you always have to take the icons on the location card from left to right. So we have defeated the monster, and now we're going to move on to the random encounter, which is the grove. So we're going to look on these reference cards here. Here's the grove. You may search the grove for mushrooms. Each mushroom found equals one food. Roll a die to see how many you find. Okay, so basically we want to roll a high number. If we roll a one, that's lame. Five, that's good. Five gives us two mushrooms, which equals two food. That's awesome. Uh, food, uh, rations, uh, same thing, I think. So there we go, we're up to two. Yeah, so food is represented by the ration icon. Okay. So that is the first room of the dungeon done. Um, maybe I should have mentioned that if we get to the end of the fifth level of the dungeon and we have not found the three shards, we lose. Right, so we've got a statue room, and this room has a trap in it, and then some treasure. I don't really fancy doing a trap, um, so I think I will flip that, and we'll go to the waterfall instead. All right, so at the waterfall we've got a random encounter, which is the grove again, and we have got some water. So back at the grove, we're going to roll a dice to see if we find any mushrooms. One. Get lost and lose one energy. That sucks, doesn't it? So I lose an energy. Rubbish. Okay, and then the water says in the rules, 
You can always look for food when you find water, roll one dice, and if the result is a five or a six, you get some food. Three, so it's nothing. On to the next room. Let's move the cutlass up there, actually. So we've got the quarters, which is a monster and a chest. So let's go for the quarters. Let's check it out. Aha, that's good news. So in the quarters, the living quarters, we have found a possessor. Here is a possessor, has a base health of six, attacks at plus one, defends at plus one, gives me two favor, but most importantly, when I defeat the possessor, I gain one shard, which means we are one step closer to winning the game. Right, so let's set the monster's health on seven, because it's six plus one for the level of the dungeon, and do our first attack. A seven is quite high, Interesting looking at the Skull Keeper. If I expend one energy, I do an additional three points of damage. If I expend two energy, I only get one more point of damage, which is not that much. So I guess I'll expend one energy, going down to seven energy. And he's, the Possessor is not undead. That's good news. If they're undead, they have a little symbol in the corner of the card. So the Possessor is not undead, which means I do get plus one to my Cutlass. Not amazing. Uh, so we've got a difference of two there. Plus three, so that's five. Plus one is six, which means we're taking the Possessor down to one point of energy. Annoyingly means the Possessor gets to attack me back, which happens in roughly the same way. We roll the two dice. The difference of two plus one, because the possessor attacks at plus one, means that they're doing three points of damage to me. One, two, three. Okay, back to me. I'm going to expel one energy. I'm pretty sure the way this is played is you have to expend an energy. It's similar to Desolate in this way, and I guess Iron Helm as well. You have to expend an energy. The alternative is that you do a sort of a base attack, which only does one point of damage. Which would actually be fine, wouldn't it? Hang on a second. Because the old possessor's only on one point of energy. Yeah, it says, if you choose, you may deal one damage that your foe cannot defend against without expelling, expending energy. So they go, a little, atta a little final attack to finish him off, no energy expended, and the possessor is defeated. So that gets me two favor, and it gets me the first of the three shards that we need to win. Right, onto the next room. I think it's worth going into the stash since the only thing in there is some treasure. And what have we got? Oh, it's empty, that sucks. There we go, so the only thing we're finding here is a treasure chest. In the treasure chest is absolutely nothing. Okay, so the sewers. We've got a trap, a camp, and some water. I think I'm going to risk this trap. Oh, so we put it that way up, sorry. Ooh, and it is a two health point trap. That's unfortunate. So we're taking two points of health from the trap. One, two. Then we are going to... Uh, and find a campsite and for the campsite I've got two options I may rest at the campsite gaining two health and one energy or may search for precision provisions gaining one food and don't forget because I've got the books I get one extra energy when we rest at a campsite so we would get two health or two energy if we chose the top option which is I think what we're going to do so we're going to regain two energy and two health at the campsite. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And there's also some water in this room, so we can check to see if we are going to find food. I guess the food is like some little subterranean crabs or something in the water, or fishes. Nope, need to roll a five or a six to find food in the water, and we haven't done. 
So we've got one more room on this level and it could be a kitchen or we could go for the next room. Kitchen has a monster and a campsite. Now I don't think I particularly need to camp again right now. So let's, let's see what the other room is. Random encounter and a campsite. Ooh, bad news. Bad news, the random encounter is the labyrinth. You find yourself lost in a cavernous maze. Spend one food to escape. If you have zero food, spend two energy to escape. If you have no, if you have zero food or energy, spend three health to escape. Well, I've got food, so I'm gonna be losing one of my food to escape. That's, no, that's my favor. One of my food. Super annoying. Okay, but then we can camp at least. So I think I will take option two at the campsite, which is, if you remember, option two is you may gain provisions, gaining one food. So I'm gonna get my food back up to two. And there we go, that is the first level of this uh, dungeon. So we're gonna move to level two between each level we have to rest and consume some food. So our food's gonna go down by one. And then we need to collect these cards up and shuffle them. And then we're ready for the next level. Okay, got the sewers first. So we would be getting a trap straight off the bat. I think we'll skip that and we'll see what the next room is. And it's the catacombs. So we are getting a monster and then a random encounter, which is the pig man. Now, if you've got a, if you've got a turnip, the pig man will give you a shard, but unfortunately we don't have a turnip at the moment. Let's deal with the watcher first. So he has got four base energy plus two for the level. So he is on six, not energy, sorry, health. And he attacks at plus one, defends at plus one, and gives us two favor. And as an ability here, it says you lose one energy before combat begins when fighting a watcher. Annoying. Right, so we're gonna start. He's not undead though, so we get the plus one for the cutlass, which is nice. Wait a minute, I need to decide how much energy I'm spending. I'm just gonna spend one energy. And two, the difference of two, plus three, plus one is six. So I'm doing six damage. Or oh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that, that kills him. That's good, brilliant. So I'm getting two favor. And we're on to the next one. So the stash, we might as well have a look at the stash. And I'm getting a shield, that's pretty cool. So we have a look, Ooh. we have a look through the little loot deck, find the shield. I don't know if you ever get random loot, I'm not sure you do. So the shield reduces damage from attacks by one, and we can discard the shield, oh, discard the shield if you take six or more damage in a single blow. That sounds pretty brutal, does that happen? I guess it could. Right, so we'll put the shield there. That's a handy thing to have. Next room is a trap and a random encounter. Hmm, I don't really want to do a trap, so let's not risk that. Oh, it's the turnip. But that's for the treasure, not the random encounter. Okay, so we are going into the old well. We've got a monster. And we've got some water. So the monster is the spider. Spider starting on five health. I'm gonna attack using one energy. Four, brilliant. Four, five, six, seven, eight, because of the cutlass. So spider is very quickly dispatched. I get one favour and he's done. 
So the next room we've got a random encounter and some water, so let's give that a go. So the random encounter is the shrine. Shrine, you gain one shard. So there we go, we've got our second of two shards. Brilliant. And we've got some water, so we can roll to see if we find any food. Six, we do. We find some food. Fabulous. So we are very well on our way to success here. Famous last words, but this might be one of those rare videos where I actually succeed and win the game. So the sanctum is a trap and a monster. I don't really like the sound of that. On to the next one, which is a trap and a treasure. So I guess that's better than a trap and a monster. It's not though, because I've just seen what the treasure is. But first we do the trap, which loses me two energy. Oh, that's bad. And then the treasure is a mimic. So if you're down on your Dungeons and Dragons or fantasy monster lore, you know that a mimic is a essentially a monster that hides in plain sight as an object, traditionally as a treasure chest. So here it is. And as soon as we find it, we have to fight it. And it's got an ability here. When you defeat a mimic, you gain favour equal to the dungeon level. OK, so we'll gain two favour when we defeat it. So the Mimic is starting on 4 health plus 2, which is 6. And attacks at plus 1, defends at plus 1. Right, here we go. I'm going to spend 1 energy. My energy level is getting pretty low, down to 3. Oh, that's good though. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 1 hit, and the Mimic is defeated. And we get 2 favour. Takes me up to eight favour. All right, let's just crack on, see if we can finish this level. This is the last room. Chasm is just a monster, so I'm not gonna do that. And the next one is a monster and a campsite. So a campsite is good. Fighting a monster, not so much. It is a wraith. So this is the first wraith we've encountered in this game. All right, so the Wraith uh, has base health of five, plus two for the level, so starting at seven, plus one for attack, plus zero for defend, two favor if we defeat him, and you lose one favor every time the Wraith successfully hits during combat. Right, so I'm gonna spend one energy and hope for a good roll. That's not a great roll. Two. Three, four, five, six. So it takes it down to one energy. Sorry, one health. Which means that the Wraith is going to attack me back. Oh, that's three plus one is four. Although I've got a shield, so that's reduced back down to three. So the Wraith is doing me three damage. One, two, three. And I'm going to lose one favour. All right, then I, because the Wraith is only on one energy, I can do one final little hit for no energy expenditure to finish him off. So I'm getting two favour, two, and the Wraith is defeated, and the level is finished. So we're going to go on to level three. We need to spend one food, shuffle these cards, and then we can start the next level. So now we're on level three, every time we encounter a monster, we'll be adding on three points to their health. So every level we go further down, the monsters become increasingly difficult to hit. But we only need one more shard, so hopefully, hopefully, we are going to do all right here. First room is the catacombs, with a monster and a random encounter. I'm going to skip that one. Ooh. And then we're into the corridor, which is a trap, which is doing two health damage. One, two, taking me down to six. And a random encounter, which is the labyrinth. And if you remember the labyrinth, I have to spend one food, if I can, to escape. And I can, so I've got to spend one food. 
That sucks. So I've got no food. I think it might be time to use my potion, which if you remember, gains me two health and two energy. Just make me feel a little bit less vulnerable. Taking up to eight health and four energy, which is not a huge amount, but it's better than where I was. Then we've got a chasm. One monster, just a monster. Of course, the thing is, it could be the possessor, which would give me the final shard. So I think I'm gonna risk the monster. It's not, it's the skelepede. Right, let's see what the skelepede is all about. So he starts on three health plus three for the dungeon level, so six. No bonus to attacks, one bonus to defenses, one favor when we defeat him. Skelepedes do not miss when they attack. They always re-roll doubles. I forgot to say, when we roll a double, or the monster rolls a double, that is a miss. But we, I don't think we actually had any of those, which is why it hasn't come up. At least I don't think we have. Anyway, I'm going to use one energy to do my first attack. That's good. Four plus three, four, five, six, seven... Plus one, no, not plus one, because the skeleton is undead, so it's just uh, seven. But that is enough to kill the skeleton, which is nice. So he's dead, I'm getting a favour, and we can move on. So the next one is a trap and a monster. I think I'm going to not risk the trap and the monster. Oh, that's good. That's good, that was lucky. That was very lucky. So the monster we are now encountering is the Possessor, who has the final shard. I'm sure we've recognised him and are doubly determined to destroy him as a result. Get that final shard and save the day. So we've got six, seven, eight, nine. So nine health to start with. So he's probably our biggest monster yet. One in attack, one in defence two favour at the end and we get the shard when we defeat him. Now I've only got three energy which is a bit scary so I'm going to use one energy in my first attack. Oh that's quite low. Two plus three is five plus one is six however the possessor has a defence of one which takes it back down to five. One, two, three, four, five takes, takes it down to four health does mean obviously that it's going to attack, get to attack me back. Oh, that's brutal. Five, five damage plus one, um, so six damage. So I'm knocking off one of those because of my shield, taking me back down to five damage, but that is fairly harsh. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm only on three health, good Lord. The Possessor is only on 4 health, and I get to attack next. So I'm only going to spend 1 energy, because I still think spending that second energy just for 1 extra point, or should I do it? Should I use both of my final energies? I think I will. Ooh, 2. Plus 4, because I spent 2 energy. So that's 6. Plus 1 for the Cutlass is 7. The Possessor's Defence of 1 takes it back down to 6. He is on 4 energy, which means he is defeated. Gets me 2 favour, 1, 2. But more importantly, gets us that final shard. And the game is over. And our human Skull Keeper character is victorious. Okay, so the way you tally up your final score is 10 points for each shard, points equal to the sum of your remaining health, energy and food, 2 points for each favour, and double the value of your ending dungeon level. So that's 30 plus um, 0 over here, 30 plus 3, plus 2 points for each favour, which is 20. Uh, uh, 24, so 54, 55, 56, 57, double the value of your ending dungeon level, 
57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Let me just check that. Yeah, I think that's right. So there you go. We've got a final score of 63, which sounds pretty good to me. A nice, quick little game that you can fit into a tiny tin and keep it in your pocket and play it whenever you fancy. So all of these components fit into the little tin, including the dice and the cubes and everything. In fact, tell you what, why don't I put this away? I'll speed it up and you can see how easy this is. So there you go. Oh, one left. There you go. Tin Helm, a tiny game in a tin and another victory for the Lone Adventurer channel. Hope you enjoyed that folks. If you did and you want to see more adventures just like this one, please do hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment, let me know if you've played this one, if you enjoy it, whether this is your favourite uh, Jason Glover game, or whether you prefer Iron Helm, or one of the other ones, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.